Okay guys, welcome back to the channel and thanks for tuning in. Ains DRC, hope you're all good. So I thought I'd just do a quick deanodizing video, show you guys how to deanodize, because I get asked quite a few questions about how I deanodize my parts. Um, today I'll be anodizing a top plate and a little Ackerman plate. Um, I also, I aren't going to be doing any shocks today, but when you do your shocks, it, it's hard to get the thread shiny but I find if you put your polish on we'll talk about that in a second you can see there though I've done the I've done these shocks um, about two years ago off of V2 or the, yeah V2 uh, but you can see with a toothbrush even after two years they'll come up shiny with a bit of polish and um, yes yeah, so moving on what what you're going to be needing is caustic soda I personally like caustic soda on its own. You can get it in a drain cleaner. It's mixed with drain cleaner, but I don't advise it. It's much better results with just caustic soda. Um, you'll be needing a tub for your water for wash after. I've got the big tub for, wash, for washing off after. A uh, small tub for your parts, but obviously if you were doing big parts, you'll need a bigger tub for your parts. Um, also, I highly advise wearing a mask because the fumes are really toxic even before you put the parts in the aluminium before you even put the aluminium parts in the fumes are really toxic I did one to nail it by accident and I, well I had an headache anyway put it that way the next day I had a really bad headache so yeah you'll need one mask and gloves because you don't want to get it on your fingers because it really does burn your fingers um, what else we've been needing some tweezers for getting the parts out some Metal polish, I use Auto Sol uh, and some rags. Any metal polish, I suppose, do it, but I like Auto Sol. Yes, yeah, so let's jump straight in. Um, yeah, as for mixing, I'm doing this little tub. So all, all I'll be all I'll be wanting in the little tub is about half a capful. If I was doing it in the big tub, probably about one and a half capfuls. But basically, you just want to do a mixture so it goes quite cloudy and then it'll turn clear after so you'll get the mix right eventually but that's roughly what I do one or two caps into that big tub um, yeah so we'll get some water in and I'll be doing it outside because I don't do it inside like that because I said the fumes are really poisonous can give you a bad headache remember guys subscribe appreciate it all help me grow my channel I'll uh, be doing more how to vids some bash vids be out there with the armors Okay guys, let's get some water and get this in. Okay guys, so I've come outside, got all my stuff ready, what I need. Um, let's mix some up. As for mixing, you never mix the water with caustic soda. You should always put the water in first and then mix the caustic soda in. So you never put caustic soda into the tub and then put water in. So let's get some water in. Got some water, that's my cleaning tub. I'll wash the parts off in there. As for time, I'd say, generally about two or three minutes um, usually does the trick so there's my small tub I'm not I can't wear my mask because if I wear my mask you won't be able to hear what I'm saying so I'm just going to take real precaution and I'm outside so I should be pretty safe um, yeah so I use a toothbrush for mixing it in so I've got about half a cap full there maybe a, a, maybe a tiny little bit more out with the mix um, yes yeah, so as you can see there guys about half a cap full mix that in now when it starts mixing you'll really feel temperature coming off it so I'm gonna have to be careful now I've got that cap in so like I was saying before guys I'll show you this you see it's gone quite cloudy and then in a minute it'll clear up. You can actually see the few the vapors coming off it. You can actually see the vapors coming off it there. Sorry guys, I don't want to breathe it in. Um, so yeah, give it a good mixing up. You see it's starting to go clear already now. So it's gone from cloudy to clear. You can see it's getting clearer. So it's pretty much mixed in, so we'd like to get the parts in. Top plate in first, Ackerman in. 
so there we are guys we'll start to see some bubbling off it soon don't know if you don't know if you guys can see it but it's starting to bubble we'll leave that for a few minutes it's already start it's already starting to take the anodizing off can you see the water the water's changing colour, it's taking the anodizing off. Mix it around a bit. Now I've done a strong mix here. That's how I like it though. I mean it's been about what 30 seconds and it's taking that off nicely. Same as Ackerman plate. To be honest, sometimes it can take 30 seconds, sometimes it can take two minutes, but it just depends on your mix and how deep your anodizing is. So, I mean, you don't want to leave it in too long because it can actually melt the aluminium. So, and you don't want to leave it in, which I'm trying not to. So I think that's plenty for this. Let's get it out with the tweezers. Like I said, guys, it start bubbling. The temperature coming off of that is pretty mad. So there's your, can you see it's nice and shiny. There's the Ackerman, also nice and shiny. There's, there's all the anodizing in there. Move that out. So you can get your parts now. Give them a wipe. Look at that, guys. Perfectly de-anodized, and when it'll come up really shiny with some polish. Ackerman and there you are you can leave it like that if you want or you can polish it and then use lacquer on top to keep it shiny stop it from but it, to be honest I, I've just showed you that shock before that shock's two years old and I can still get some shininess to it with a rub so that's two years old so aluminium doesn't tend to rust or or pit too bad so that's it guys, we'll uh, get in and give it a quick polish. Okay, so they just need a quick polish now with some metal polish. They're looking pretty good already. I mean, if you wanted to, you could leave it like that. That's the top plate, that's the Ackerman. So what I'll be using is Auto Salt, great metal polish. You'll need two rags. Yeah, just a tiny little dab on the end of that rag. So it's got holes, so you will need something to just poke it out of the holes with. So let's get plenty of that, plenty of that on there. You can see, you don't need loads, just a little bit. Give it a good rub. You can use, if you want to, use a um, power tool or a Dremel with a, with a buffering piece on it, but. To be honest, I don't really think you need to. I like the raw aluminium look, not too shiny. But as you can see, I mean, that's already come up really shiny. If you do that a couple of more times, then you'll have a really shiny piece. So get your, that's, get your second cloth, really buffer it up. There you go, guys. One deanodized top plate. Looking nice and shiny. Not, not got the best light in here today. It's very dull outside, and got my spotlights on. But so yeah, do the Ackerman quick for you. That's all the black that comes off it. So let's do the Ackerman quick. I mean, the more you polish, the shine it's going to get. Like I say, you can use a power tool and really give it a buff, but I don't think there's any need to look how shiny that's coming already. Okay. If you want to subscribe, um, hit the bell to see more of my vids. I appreciate it all, guys. So, yeah, there's the Ackerman. Nice and shiny off just a quick polish. So that's it guys, hope you enjoyed the video and hope it helps you.